Welcome back to our channel. We're happy to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about practice exams. A lot of you have emailed me, asked me questions about the online exam format. What does it look like? Can I copy and paste? Am I able to highlight information in the question? We're going to be covering all those things today. But first, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click like on this video if you like the content. And of course, leave some comments for us. Let us know what sort of things or what sort of questions you have about the NCA process and that will help us create future content for you that's useful. So moving back to the online practice exams, many of you know that prior to COVID, the NCA exams were written in person, you had to go to a testing center and COVID had changed all of that. So now the exams are online. It doesn't appear that the online format is going away anytime soon. In fact, Deborah Wolf, uh, the director of the NCA, the executive director, has commented that she doesn't believe we're ever going back to uh, the in-person format. So the online format is here to stay. And today we're going to be asking, answering your questions about that format. So I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. So let's head over right to this practice exam. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to access this practice exam so you can test it yourself. But this is what it's going to look like. You're going to get instructions over here um, on how uh, the exam is supposed to be conducted. Currently, the exam is an open book four hour exam. However, it is a three hour exam, but the NCA has allotted an extra hour um, to get over any pains or or technical difficulties that we're having with the online system. Most of those or all of those issues seems to have been ironed out by now. And so the NCA announced that as of January 2022, the length of time for these exams is going to drop down to three and a half hours. Uh, and again, you're still writing a three hour exam, but you have three and a half hours to do so. And then as of July 2022, it's going to drop down even further back down to the three hour mark, which is the um, length of time that these exams should be written in. OK, so it says here that currently it's a four hour open book exam. You can only access your hard copy study materials. You're not going to be able to access any digital books or notes or anything like that. In fact, the software locks down most of the computer's functionality. So things like uh, the control button or command button if you're on a Mac, um, those are not accessible. You can't do copy and paste and things like that. Okay, um, so read the instructions and then you'll find below there's going to be specific instructions for your exam over here. Um, and then uh, it'll tell you how many parts to the exam, how many questions, and then there's an NCA candidate agreement. Uh, with terms and conditions that you consent to having your information disclosed to Paradigm Testing, which is the test provider the NCA has partnered with, um, and that you've read their policies and you understand all these things. So at the very bottom of the exam, you're going to have to accept because if you decline, it's not going to allow you to proceed. So you have to go back, you have to accept these terms, and then you are in the exam. And these specific instructions for the exam are going to pop up again. All right, so let me show you uh, the different features here. On the right hand side, you'll see um, where my cursor is over here. It says the amount of time you have remaining in the exam. So the exam is a four hour exam currently. You've got three hours, 59 minutes, and it's counting down. Okay, on the top bar over here, uh, it says uh, the practice exam you're in. So this is the constitutional law practice exam and the number of questions over here. You've got question one, two, three, four, five, and you can actually toggle between these questions. So if I click on question two, uh, if I click on question three, question four and question five, I can always come back to the previous questions. Okay, so even if I've written something here, um, so let me show you how to write something. This text box here is extremely finicky. If I click over here in the center and try and type something, nothing is going to work. If I type on the right, nothing is going to work. Even if I type here in the corner, nothing works. You really have to go into the far top left corner to click several times before you can get this thing to type. 
So there you are. It's extremely finicky and that's why it's a good reason, there's a good reason to try out this practice exam before you get into the actual exam. So what are some of the things you can do? Um, and what are some of the things you cannot do? So the first thing I want to show you is that as you're reading the question and the questions up here, in a few short sentences or paragraphs on each question, assess the accuracy of the following five statements. These statements may be true, false, or somewhere in between. So let's just say I want to highlight this, true, false, or somewhere in between. Uh, if you highlight that, you'll see this um, prompt come up and it says to highlight or strike through. So let's click on highlight and bam, there you are. You can actually highlight your question, okay? Points will be awarded to answers with references to relevant case law, constitutional provisions, and readings listed in the course. So let's say I want to highlight that. There you are. And then let's say I want to get rid of this for whatever reason. I probably would never use a strike through, but this is what it looks like when you strike through something. Okay. And so when you, this is particularly helpful when you've got a long fact pattern in, in exams like administrative law or criminal law, you can use the highlighting. Now you'll notice that you only have one color to highlight with. There are no options to change that color over here. Um, so you're only allowed to highlight in yellow or use the strike through function. Okay, so that's for the actual question. But when you're typing, you, ha you have a lot more options here. So if you take a look here, and let's say I want this to be a heading. Okay, so you have a few options here. You can highlight this and you can click on styles and you have all these different styles over here. You can also click on headings. So this could be a heading one, right? Or um, you can simply do that manually. So leave it as normal and you can click on bold. You can change the size of the font if you'd like and you can do that yourself. Okay, so there are plenty of options. Also, you can change the color of your font over here. So if you want that font to be red for whatever reason, even if you would like to highlight that font, so you can go over here on the second button over here, which is the background color of the font. And you can select that and hit yellow. Excuse me, I did not hit yellow, there you go. And then you can see that this is now highlighted yellow. Um, Try not to use any of the darker colors, of course, um, because then you won't be able to, it's going to be very difficult to read for your examiner. Okay. Um, there we are. So there's a lot you can do. Let me show you some of the other functionality here and some of the bugs uh, that kind of um, crept up as I was working through this uh, document here. So one of the neat things is you can actually insert a table uh, with this functionality right here. Let's say you want three rows. Uh, let's make that, um, let's change that to four rows uh, with five columns, for example. Um, and there you are. Okay, so click on that, click OK, and there you've got one, two, three, four rows with five columns. Now it is, the, the functionality of this is a bit strange. So as you start typing, you're gonna see things these cells are going to keep resizing themselves. This will resize itself. And that's a bit weird. The way you fix this, you can't really drag the columns here, but rather you have to click into another cell and start typing. And as you can see, it just respaces itself out. Okay, so that will work itself out. Um, but again, this is another reason why you want to try and practice and, um, you know, use this uh, online tool so you can get familiar with it before your exam. Uh, let me show you something else that's quite finicky. So let's say I want to do a quotation. There's this really neat functionality here. If you look at the uh, block quotes, you can insert a block code here. So let's click on this function, block quote and say, this is what Peter Hogg said, for example. Now, if I click return, it's, it's stuck in this block here. It's not allowing me to get out of the block and go to the next paragraphs, right? So if I hit backspace and I wanna click here or 
return to the next line, it's very hard to do. What you need to do is hover over this red line that you see over here. There's this red line with this little arrow key. When I hit the arrow key, it says insert a paragraph here. That's how you proceed to the next line. And then you can start typing again and uh, you know you can hit return. So, so there are these little quirks, these little things that you need to learn and get used to so that you're comfortable during the exam. I also think the font size is quite small for me personally, so I would certainly increase the font size here. Um, and I'd want to type in something like 18 or something like that. This is much more comfortable for me to read. So you can change the font size. Of course, you can also use underlining, italics, bold, different styles here. You can change, you can even change the font to Comic Sans or whatever font you'd like to use. Uh, if you want to uh, make adjustments to your paragraph, for example, you want to align this to the right, you can do that. You want to center this, you can do that as well. Uh, or if you'd like it justified. So uh, there are many options. There are even formulas here. So if you need to do some calculations, you can do that here as well. Okay, so uh, that's one functionality. I want to talk about bookmarking as well. So let's say you get to um, uh, question two, for example. You're not sure about this question. Uh, you typed a little bit. You typed some of your thoughts. And then you get stuck and you want to bookmark it so you can um, get back to it at the end of the exam. So you click on this button over here where it says bookmark and that way you've booked market and then you can continue your exam, uh, write your other questions, write your other questions. Here I'm going to do them. Remember it's finicky and won't let you type. If you click somewhere in the middle you have to click really right in the top left corner then it works. Okay, so the neat thing is if I'd like to go back to question one I can and everything I wrote is still saved there. Okay, if I'd like to go to question three, I'm finished this question. Question four, then it works. It's there. Question two, I hadn't done anything. I typed some of my thoughts, but I hadn't completed it. And question five is blank. So let me show you um, some of the tools and some of the things you can do with this. Um, I'm just going to minimize my screen a little bit so you can see this. Um, just a moment. So on the corner here, um, you have something called question review. And if you click on question review, it kind of summarizes what's going on. You've attempted four questions. Now remember, there are five questions. So you can click on review and complete, and that takes you to question five, which I haven't even attempted yet. You can also go back here and click on review the flagged question. And that's the one where I typed some of my thoughts, but I hadn't written anything. So flagged question is a great tool to use, especially if you have some multiple choice questions on your exam. And there are a lot of questions. So you can use that function, flag those, uh, bookmark those rather, and then come back to them. Okay, sometimes I do get this uh, freezing of the screen where I've clicked on the next button and it doesn't do anything. And you can wait, I've waited, you know, quite a few minutes and nothing happened. So I just click on the refresh button. On a PC, you can also hit F5. Um, so I've come back and I found that my work is still saved. Okay, so it's still saved here, which is pretty cool. You're not going to lose it. Um, Although I know some students at the very beginning, uh, when the NCA just started this about a year and a half ago, they did lose some of their information. At the bottom, you'll notice there is a progress bar as well. It tells you you've completed four out of five questions, so that hopefully you're not going to miss any questions here. Okay, and then when you've completed this exam, you can just hit the submit button and submit this. Over here it says, warning, are you sure you'd like to submit your exam? You're not going to be able to return to it once you submit it. So if you're, you know, if you're not done, you can click no and you'll come back to it. But of course, if you are done, you can click yes and that will submit your exam to, to the test center. Okay, wonderful. So what I'd like to do now is actually walk you through how to access this sample exam. And uh, there were some changes recently on the NCA's website. So this is, of course, 
the National Committee on Accreditation's website. And there are a couple ways to get to this page, but the easiest is to hover over the exams tab here uh, on the top uh, bar here, and you'll see the second uh, option in the drop down menu is exam outlines and samples. When you click on exam outlines and samples, scroll down to, um, you've probably seen this before, this is where all the NCA syllabi are, as well as the sample exams, but it's not any of these links. At the very top, sorry, not at the very top, but this paragraph over here has changed. It changed about a week ago. Uh, and it says, the NCA provides several ways to help you prepare for your NCA online exams. One is a practice exam. So when you click on this practice exam, a new tab will open up, which is right here, and it's telling you there's a redirect notice. This is sending you to another website. It's a warning, right? The page you are on is trying to send you to Paradigm Testing. And Paradigm is the third, provi third party provider for this exam testing that they've partnered. Uh, this is who the NCA has chosen to be the provider for the exam. So you can click on this link, it is safe, and it'll take you to this exam that you've already seen. All right, wonderful. So if you do have any questions about this video or about the online exam, please post them uh, in the comments section below. We'd also love to hear from you. Uh, what kind of ideas, what sort of topics do you want us to talk about? We'd be happy to post those as well. Thanks again for joining our channel. We'll see you next time at NCA Tutor.